Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today I have a wonderful colleague here with me uh, this evening to talk about what's happening in, in Albany, uh, what are the priorities uh, as we deal with this legislative session. And I'm so pleased to have Senator David Carlucci here with me today. Welcome, David. Thanks for having me. Right. It's You're great the to be here. 38th New York State Senate District, but before you you got involved with the Senate, and you, this is your third year, I think, mm -hmm. as a, as a yes. senator. Um, you had you'd had three terms as the town clerk in Clarkstown. Yes, yeah, that's right. It was uh, it was a great experience because uh, the clerk, I, I call it, it's the hub of local government. Mm -hmm. And uh, when people have a problem, a question, a concern, uh, that's usually their first stop. And uh, it was just a great experience to learn about all the different issues in the community uh, and all the different facets of local government. And um, I was there for five years. And in the middle of my third term, um, I decided to run for the New York State Senate and figured that uh, what was happening in the, in the state was impacting us mm -hmm. in, uh, in the, the most local level and thought that uh, I could make a difference. And uh, now, now here I am. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I know as town clerk too, you were really looking at all the technology issues, how to open, actually access government for the people. Yeah. And th that's also a part of what we're trying to do all the time Absolutely. too. Absolutely. No, it's, uh, it's so important. I think when um, people ask, they say, what does a, what does a clerk do? And, and, yeah. and it's similar in terms of making sure that government is, ac as, is accessible as possible. And um, some of the things that I did back then was uh, access opportunities in terms of grant funding to digitize all our records. Mm -hmm. uh, we had records going back to April 7th, 1752. And now those records are digitized and people can look at them online uh, and access history that was really lost to the archives mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. not accessible to the public. Right. Um, but some of the things that I did back then, I, I do now, like uh, doing a mobile office where I go to different areas of the community and try to meet with residents at a time and a place that's really convenient mm -hmm. for them. Now, what do you do use for your mobile office? Are, are you using public facilities pretty much? Yeah, or? public facilities, um, wherever there's people. Mm -hmm. um, libraries are usually very easy to set up, but some of the things I like to do is go to some of the supermarkets um, mm -hmm. because that's where people really don't expect to see you. Uh, but when they're doing their grocery shopping on a mm -hmm. Sunday morning um, and they see you there, what I find is it's um, people have things on their mind, but they're not mm -hmm. willing either, or they're not, they don't have the time to pick up the phone or send us an email. Um, but if they see us, mm -hmm. that's when we really hear what's on their mind. Right. I actually, I don't set up a table at the supermarket, but whenever I go to the supermarket, it takes me forever Absolutely. to go get a very little amount of, <laughs> of right. groceries because down every aisle, people will say, oh, I meant to call you, I meant to write yeah. a letter, and then you have a discussion about the issue. And uh, yeah, you know, I find the same important. thing, and I, I love it. I think it's great because uh, that's what I have to do is, though, allocate the time. And mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. do the grocery shopping in my house, and I tell my wife, I'm, I'm going, but it's going to take two hours because mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. have to take the time to talk to residents and figure out what's really on their mind. Right. And uh, I think it's very valuable. And some legislative ideas that I have, uh, you know, one of the bills that we're working on together, um, the, uh, the Christmas tree bill, Mm -hmm. um, where it was, it came to me from a constituent uh, that was enraged because he had just spent the day putting up his artificial Christmas tree uh, right. with his children and uh, his dog running around, uh, then read the box and it said, uh, you know, wash your hands um, because this might contain mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. chemicals that are, are dangerous mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. children and to animals. Uh, and it was per California state law. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, why is this not in New York? Why is this not right. a national issue? And um, it was just an idea and talking to the supermarket. And um, I said, yeah, that's right. a great idea. It's amazing because constituents are so important. I know you've just opened up uh, an office in Austin. First of all, tell us about your, your senatorial district. How many mm -hmm. people do you have uh, included in the district and what are the communities? Uh, well, right now it's uh, just about 300,000 people and it represents parts of Rockland and Westchester. Um, so like we like to say, it's a, 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 the, a river runs through it, mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, the town of Ossining, and it's the towns of Ramapo, Clarkstown, and Orangetown. Uh, so it's pretty compact, um, but I thought it was very important to have that uh, 
office in Ossining to make sure that we can really service the people in Westchester and make sure that nobody has to cross a bridge to see right, their state senator. Right. And it's so interesting because crossing the bridge is not that far, it, but there's a psychological sure. thing about that water. Of course, it's a $5 of fee, course. too, to get across the uh, Tappan Zee Bridge, and we may have more complications as we go <laughs> along with the, with the bridge. Has, has that become... A, a major issue for you to, oh, involvement is the Tappan Zee Bridge and the future of it and so on? I think so. I think it's on everybody's mind. Um, that bridge is really uh, in, in the Hudson Valley. It's, a, it's one of the major corridors that uh, leads to our economic vitality. And um, having a, a strong bridge, you know, having a bridge that meets the 21st century uh, needs and something that is mass transit uh, capable, I think will totally transform our economy. Uh, going from east to west through the Hudson Valley Corridor has always been a, a challenge, historically. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think if we can actually have a bridge that meets the needs of the 21st century, uh, has that de dedicated bus lane from day one, um, but also can have mass transit. And whether that's light rail or bus rapid transit, I think that'll be huge for both Westchester and Rockland. And I was just in a meeting this morning uh, as part of the Mass Transit Task Force for the new Tappan Zee Bridge. And one of the things that I like about the bus rapid transit is with the aging population and the needs, I know when I talk to residents, they're always talking about the need for public transportation. With bus rapid transit, we can have these buses running along the corridor on the throughway, but then get off the throughway and go to many of our downtowns, mm -hmm. uh, coming mm -hmm. to downtown right. Austining or to Peekskill, um, and then picking residents mm -hmm. up and being able to travel, whether it's to Port Chester or to Suffren across the and corridor. And we actually have that that structure in place. We don't have a rail structure in mm -hmm. place to do the same kind of thing. Right. Like if, you know, it would be great to have a train come across, but they do stop now and 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 connect in in Terrytown at mm -hmm. the railroad station. But it's hard because 287 is just a little too far away from the the railroad station. So it, that's that's a big process to right. get all of that done. But the busing is certainly uh, you know that that is definitely doable. Yeah, and something that people know is reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, will run uh, throughout the day and night uh, and will have dedicated lanes uh, is so important that mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. if we're planning to get to work at a certain time, we got to be there. And sitting in traffic is something that uh, is just not acceptable. If, if we want to um, be able to provide for our families and have a, a, a good career, uh, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. something that we've got to meet. And, and the Hudson Valley, I think we can really uh, do a lot of good for generations to come, uh, but we got to do it right. Uh, right, the first step is right. this bridge, but then we've got to have a strong mass transit component. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming, see, my district doesn't quite touch touch that far down, and uh, but I, but I know the constituents and the businesses and everybody that that and the residents that are around the bridge. Um, you know, they'll be going through some some more difficult times, I think, as that's developed. And uh, I know they're, they're, the governor has groups that are trying to work with them and facilitate some of those noise issues mm -hmm. and problematic issues that they'll have. And, and that's what, what I've been urging people uh, that are experiencing any types of problems, and, and I know you do the mm -hmm. same thing. Uh, this bridge is a perfect example. If people are experiencing a problem, with it, whether it's construction, uh, it's noise, it's traffic, contact us. Let mm -hmm. us know. Uh, because this way we can try to help them mitigate that problem. Mm -hmm. And that's been the commitment of the governor, and I found him really uh, staying true to his word uh, in terms of meeting the needs of residents mm -hmm. and, and making sure that their quality of life doesn't suffer through this project. Right. So as you're traveling around in the supermarket and every other yeah. place, what rises to be some of the top issues that constituents have? They're probably the similar to mine. Oh, but absolutely. What do you find? I think they are. I think uh, with Westchester and Rockland, uh, the concerns are, are, are very similar. Um, and there, there's quite a few. Um, but obviously, one of the biggest things is just uh, uh, the cost of living in terms of property taxes and taxes in general uh, and making sure that people can afford to stay here. Uh, uh, whether it's young people that have recently graduated from college um, and are, are looking to start a family here, or it's people that have worked here their whole lives and uh, sent their kids to school and want to retire mm -hmm. here, but look at their finances and, and look at the property tax bill and say that they really can't. Mm -hmm. And that's a real problem. And that's something that we've got to make sure 
that our system is sustainable. And before this, I was at a high school and I was talking to some of the students and talking about how it's so important that we keep them here in the community. Right, we absolutely. Pay, we pay all this money in terms of property taxes to educate mm -hmm. our children. Uh, we've got one of the largest and most efficient higher education systems in the world with the SUNY mm -hmm. system. Uh, and then we spend all this money on our children and then they leave they our community. They go someplace else. Uh, it's a where brain they haven't drain. spent money on their right. kids. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're, we're, we're doing that, and then another state, like you said, that hasn't made that investment is mm -hmm. reaping the rewards. Um, and we need to develop plans and, and a long-term approach in terms of how do we keep that talent mm -hmm. here in our community. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I've worked on is uh, legislation that would give a tax credit to a student that graduated from a SUNY university, from a SUNY school, mm -hmm. Uh, does a certain amount of community service and stays here in New York, uh, they would get a tax credit to help them offset the cost of living here in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's the idea. Uh, we need to keep that talent here in our community. Uh, and it's something that I look forward to trying to get some of this mm -hmm. legislation done to do that. Right. Well, we had some success, I, I'd say, with our New York State budgets mm -hmm. the last number of years, although we didn't have money mm -hmm. uh, actually to spend our very little. We've really tried to keep the state state portion of the budget down as much as much as we can and um, actually this year we were under a two percent increase mm -hmm. um, we've you know we passed the tax cap legislation and I know a lot of our communities and school districts complain about it and so on mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's working I don't know how you feel about the tax cap yeah, I, I would agree. I think that it's definitely a, a major change uh, to the way business has been done. Uh, but I think it goes back to saying that we need a sustainable system. Uh, we want to make sure our children have the best education possible. We want to make sure we have the best infrastructure. At the same time, we've got to be able to afford to stay here and take advantage of it. Um, and, and I tell the story about uh, myself and my wife. Uh, we met at Clarkstown North High School. Um, we're married and we want to raise our children in the community uh, and we want to be able to afford to send them to a great public school system. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we can't afford to live in the community, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's really what we have to get to, to say we've got to do things in the most efficient way possible. Uh, and we've got to make it that we have priorities, uh, but it's got to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, and I know in our educational community, uh, you're probably getting those phone calls or emails about uh, the testing for kids mm -hmm. and you know the cost of the computers and everything else. Um, and that's going to be a tough balance for us as we, we're requiring uh, more standardization or, 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 or better understanding how our kids are performing uh, and at the same time being able to help our school districts with the funding. So I know, I know we had a nice increase for our school districts this year. Right, absolutely. Uh, which hadn't happened for a while. Yeah. But um, I, I'm sure that those are concerns that you're hearing about too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's no question. I think that that's what we need to continue to do. And I, and I commend you. I know we work together in getting um, an increase in state aid, particularly in the districts mm -hmm. where we overlap. Um, in Ossining and Briarcliff, and uh, it was a tremendous increase over last year. And I think that's what we have to do, is that the state has to fulfill its end of the deal um, because it can't be solely on property taxpayers. Right. It's just not a sustainable model. Actually, that reminds me of the, the bill that we worked on last year with BOCES mm -hmm. and enabling them uh, to sell some of their curriculum projects that they had put together. Um, and, and, that's back, and that would bring tax revenues back to the state of New York to help education. But so much is, is looking at how we can do consolidation and sharing and just a better system in place. And you know, you, you represent areas that have multiple villages, towns, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and so on. So it is, is looking at ways that the state legislature can facilitate uh, a better spending model. Right, right, absolutely. And I think that's what's exciting now. Uh, the silver lining in the downturn in the uh, downturn in the economy is that mm -hmm. I think people are willing to to look at it from a new approach, and and that's what I like to say. We're not going to fix 21st century problems with 20th century solutions, and we've got to make sure that we're, we can tweak, we can we can reform government uh, so that we can better uh, better utilize the services available. Mm -hmm. David, I commend you for a program that you got adopted last year with organ donations. Um, you know, again and again, we see that 
New York New Yorkers haven't signed up as much as yeah. they should to to donate their organs. Um, yes. And uh, you know you you're trying to facilitate that with new legislation that was passed. Yeah. I, I, one of the crazy statistics is that right now in New York, over 10,000 men, women, and children right now are currently waiting for a life-saving organ mm -hmm. transplant. Uh, unfortunately, people pass away every day waiting on that list. And one of the troubling things is in New York, we lag behind almost every other state when it comes to the percentage of eligible people enrolled in the organ donor program. Mm -hmm. And so I saw those numbers and said, what are we doing? Uh, is there stuff that we can do on, in, in on a policy level to change that? And uh, looking at other states, finding out which states are, have the, the large uh, numbers of people mm -hmm. enrolled, figuring out what they do, what can we model? And I teamed up with a young girl named Lauren Shields. Uh, she lives in Stony Point, and she's an amazing uh, young lady. She received a heart transplant at the age of nine. Mm -hmm. And wow. um, she's just uh, remarkable because the way that I met her, I was already involved in the organ donation trying to move this legislation. But I met Lauren Shields at a naturalization ceremony because mm -hmm. uh, she goes wherever she's invited to, to share her story. Oh, so there she was with new citizens telling that's right. her what to do? Exactly. Okay, so that's great. I mean, she's a young girl, so it's yeah. when she tells her story, right. when we're in a room, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I know we, we go to events, we speak, right. people are chattering. When she talks, you could hear a pin drop in right. the room. Right. Uh, because she's so eloquent and uh, she's a young girl, so I think people imagine uh, that that could be their daughter or grandchild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so we called, we named it Lauren's Law, and we said, look, what other states are doing when they go to the DMV, that's where most people register. Department Motor Vehicle. Yep. yep. They say uh, w now, um, starting October third, because mm -hmm. the the bill will take effect October third of this year. You'll be asked the question, would you like to be an organ donor, yes, or skip the question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something called mandated choice, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because now you'll have to answer that question in order to fill out your driver's license application. Right. It isn't up there yet That's until right. October of 2013. Yes. Um, because I know we, we looked up there, we, we I guess we thought it was coming sooner. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we were surprised that it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, so one of the negotiations that we had with the legislation was to give the Department of Motor Vehicles the time mm -hmm. uh, to come into compliance and be able mm -hmm. to, to set their procedures in place. Uh, so we gave them a year uh, from the time that we signed the bill. The governor mm -hmm. signed it into law last October. Uh, so we're looking forward. I think we'll, we'll see a tremendous amount of people uh, enrolled in the program and ultimately, that'll save people's mm -hmm. lives. And and some people say, well, you know, maybe I'm not as healthy or whatever. What I learned was you shouldn't make the decision. You should sign up, and then um, if, if something were to happen to you, let somebody else make the decision. Yeah, about, let the ex uh, experts. Whether you're okay. If right, it's something that right. you're willing to do, and not everybody mm -hmm. is comfortable with with doing that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but let's give people that option. And I think when when people think about it, overwhelmingly, people say, yeah, mm -hmm. why not? Mm -hmm. And when they know that there's 10,000 people in our own state currently waiting, uh, it, mm -hmm. it, it impacts people and I think right. we can really make right. a difference. Yeah, that's great. You've also been doing uh, a lot of work with trying to help veterans mm -hmm. um, that are coming back and um, I know you. Well, we had some money in our budget for one program yeah. for, for some mentoring, but uh, I know you've done some other work um, to try to get people into jobs. And stuff. Yeah, it, another uh, startling statistic is uh, we know right now the unemployment rate in Westchester County is around 8%. And it's uh, it's something that's um, it's high, yes. It's mm -hmm. better than mm -hmm. a lot of the state, but, it, it, but we're, we're okay there. But for veterans, it's double that. Uh, veterans coming back from Afghanistan, the unemployment rate is double that of their civilian counterparts. In some parts of New York State, the unemployment rate for veterans is in the high 30s. It's, it's a horrible mm -hmm. uh, statistic. Yeah. So, I figured, what can we do to try to lower this rate? And I formed a Veterans Advisory Committee where we meet and we talk about issues. And we put forth the bill uh, that I call Jobs for Heroes uh, that will give a tax credit to employers who hire an unemployed veteran. Uh, and we were able to get this bill done. We mm -hmm. got the funding in the budget. Uh, so now it's the law. And now uh, an employer that hires an unemployed veteran uh, can get up to a $15,000 tax credit uh, for hiring that unemployed veteran. And the great thing about it is it incentivizes uh, high paying jobs because the tax credit is a percentage of the actual of salary. Of the actual salary, so, yeah. right, right. So it wouldn't be just that they want to 
have somebody come in at a at a low level salary right. range, they would write right. So and the the thing is that we we got this done in the budget, mm -hmm. but not a lot of people know about it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's one of the problems. So we we've got to try to get the word out about it and. That's one of the problems that I see that that's going on in New York, with mm -hmm. particularly with our smaller businesses. You know, the big multinational uh, corporations that do business in New York, they have access to attorneys and lobbyists mm -hmm. that look out for these programs. Mm -hmm. The small businesses that I know that you care deeply about and are trying to help, they're the ones that don't get this information. It's hard. It's hard. And so we got to try to figure out a way that we can get that information to the people that really need it uh, and help our smallest businesses in New York f flourish. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the Jobs for Heroes program, it, it's, it's great for veterans, and I think we'll do our part to lower the unemployment rate for veterans in New York. But at the same time, we're giving that tax credit to a lot of small businesses that really could mm -hmm. desperately use it in this, in this economic right. downturn. You know, JV, you bring up a, hard, a, a subject that's that's really difficult. How to get out information? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same thing if you're with a not-for-profit organization, and you know you have a cer great service in your community. How do people get to know about it? Um, you know, I don't know what you use. I, I try in my newsletters mm -hmm. to get out as much information, or up on my website, yeah. or Facebook, or whatever. Um, but I know I'm, I'm only reaching, uh, you know, you just don't know who you're right, reaching or who right. reads or whatever else. Do you have a, a good secret um, about? Well, <laughs> I, I use those those models as well in terms of Facebook. Uh -huh. I find it's, a, it's good. Uh, but that's why, like, we talked about the mobile office, just trying uh -huh. to get in front of people where you can. Um, but I think the bigger issue there in terms of specifically when we talk about programs for small businesses is uh, there's talk about the one-stop shop, um, but I know we can do better in terms mm -hmm. of knowing, um, first of all, if you are a small business, what incentives are out there? What can you take advantage of? Whether it's working mm -hmm. uh, with contracts with the Tappan Zee Bridge Project, which right. is gonna be one of the largest infrastructure projects mm -hmm. in the nation, mm -hmm. or if, if you're, a, you're a person in the community that wants to start a small business, how mm -hmm. do you do that? And that's one of the big obstacles that we have. And I think whatever we can do to, to break down those barriers from mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. with an idea to right. an actual uh, business, uh, that'll be tremendous. And, and I, I like to talk about when I was town clerk, I would hear these stories. People would come mm -hmm. into my office, say, oh, I got this great idea, I wanna start this business, and they were so mm -hmm. excited. Um, and then I started telling them, well, okay, so you, you have this business, okay, you right. gotta go down to the building department and get uh -huh. that filled out, and the fire well, inspector that, that to get the That was wonderful, CEO. right, right, to be able and, to do that. And, and that's uh -huh. the thing, but, it, but the problem was there's all these departments and all these different mm -hmm. agencies, and the way if we can combine those and break down those those mm -hmm. regulatory barriers, I think that'll be tremendous. You for somehow New York State. have an ombudsman that that gets you through the uh, right. all of the the differences and the cracks and the this and the that. Right? Yeah, you know, it's really really a problem. Uh, it's a problem for us because we're in Albany part of the time, <laughs> so it's yeah. hard to be that <laughs> right, right, that sure. direct. Although we have lobbyists, citizens, and, yep. and so when they come up and talk with us mm -hmm. about different issues, and so I know you know. It's an opportunity to hand out a pamphlet about this, that, or the other things, right. so, uh, which is good. One of the issues that um, there's a lot of discussion about this year is how campaigns are run, election law, um, uh, you know, there's uh, what's happened in New York City with their co campaign finance uh, boards and so on. Um, I know in the assembly we've taken some positions on this, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I think you're involved too in, in some campaign finance reform. Are there certain recommendations that, that you're making to your colleagues in the Senate? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there's a lot we can do when it comes to campaign finance reform. And when you, you hear about the uh, corruption and scandals going on, whether it's in Albany or in local governments, it just it, it puts a bad taste in people's mm -hmm. mouth. And it, and it does a lot of disservice to getting people involved in the electoral process. So there's quite a few things I think we need to do. First, on the campaign side, we need to do campaign finance reform. And then we need election reform, too, in terms mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. making it easier for people to register to vote and come out to vote. Um, one of the proposals I have is to allow 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register to vote. Mm -hmm. So when they mm -hmm. turn 16 and they go to the DMV, they can actually register. So mm -hmm. when they are 18, they can Right, and often they've gone off to college yeah. and they forget about that. The right. latest statistic, about 46% right. of 18 to 24 year olds are actually registered to vote. Not 46% not turn out to vote, that's just registered mm -hmm. to vote. And then when we talk about the percentage that turn out to vote, even if it's 50%, 
that's really only 23% of the population. Right. And we don't even have Because the in many instances, they have to get absentee ballots. It's right. a very complicated process. So, and that. then on the campaign yeah. finance reform, I think it's important that we lower the, the contribution limits that people can give. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that I'd like to do is set up a, a list in terms of ending pay to play. So if someone's doing business with the state of New York, they'd be put on this list and they'd be capped uh, tremendously in terms of the amount mm -hmm. of money that they can contribute to political candidates. But I think in, in addition to that, it adds a level of transparency in terms of knowing, okay, well, how is this person involved? Are they on this list of doing business with the state? Uh, that'll be tremendously important. Um, I have some other ideas too in terms of uh, Right now, the contribution limits to a state senator, it's uh, $10,300 if you're mm -hmm. running in the general election. Now, someone running for president of the United States, it's only $2,600. Okay. So I think we need to lower the contribution limits, lower it to $2,600. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's level that. Um, let's get rid of corporate contributions completely. Um, let's cap the amount of money that people can give to political parties. Mm -hmm. Right now in New York State, if you have $10 million, you can write the Democratic write Party the or the Republican right. Party. You can write them unlimited amounts of money. And then it goes to the party, and really, there's no. In, in many cases, it goes into this housekeeping account. That's right. It's, it's a very t funny term, but uh, it really doesn't have controls over. Any so if of we're going to do if right. we're going to do campaign finance reform, which I, I really hope we can mm -hmm. get done, let's do it right, mm -hmm. uh, because I think this is our opportunity, and let's really let's really get it done right. And I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, that'll encourage more people to get involved in the process, have more people run for office, uh, and that's, that's what we need. Um, I often, I tell the story about how when I was in high school, um, I thought about uh, my future and saying, you know, maybe one day I want to run for office. And I would say oh, that. Okay. I would say that, and people would say to me, why do you want to do that? You're a nice uh -huh. person. <laughs> and, and that's, that's the, not the response that you want to hear. That's right? not the response you want to hear. Right. And that's yeah. the same thing that was going on, you know, uh, 15, 20 years ago is going on today nice. and maybe even worse today. Uh, you pick up the paper, you watch the TV, and you hear all these bad things about uh, politicians. And some of them are really bad, but they're mo the majority are good and they mm -hmm. got into it mm -hmm. for the right reason. But we need to encourage young people right. and, and everybody to say, look, if you have an idea, if you want to make the community better, we need you. First, mm -hmm. we need you to vote. But second right. of all, we need you to step up and run for office. Right. Because there are many times when there really aren't opponents um, in, in elections. And, uh, you know, you, then you're not out there discussing the issues, debating right. with the public about, you know, why you voted this way, why if you're an incumbent or what you would do differently. You just don't have that give and take about government, which is really so important. It's crucial. Right. Now, just as we conclude very quickly, uh, we started out and we talked about the Hudson River, which you were on both sides of the Hudson River. We have a bill together that we're working on to try to get boat safety and uh, better boating in, 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 our, in our waters in, in New York State, and uh, hopefully we can get that done this year. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I think we have to get it done. I mean, it's wild to think. I know we've, we've dealt with tragedy here in, mm -hmm. uh, right on the Hudson River, uh, but there's been so many other cases in New York State, and right now you can get in a boat, uh, it doesn't matter how big it is, you don't mm -hmm. need any qualification, any right. safety uh, courses or anything, and drive that boat. And uh, uh, being that the summer is here, uh, this is the start of the 100 deadliest days of summer uh, in terms of going from the Memorial Day to, to Labor Day. Uh, and in that period, we have people that want to have fun, mm -hmm. take advantage of the beautiful Hudson River and other lakes that we have in our mm -hmm. communities. Um, but there's a danger there because right. there's a lot of professionals, a lot of people that, mm -hmm. that know what they're doing. But, but the there are others time, that don't. So hopefully you can get that done. I David, so. I thank you so much for Thanks joining for me, me on the program. And uh, may you continue to do good things in Albany. And I, I continue to enjoy working with you as Same we here. go forward. So thank all of you for watching. If you have any questions, give me a call at 914-941-1111. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>